I thought it'd be fun to do a, a video called Five Sexy Black Pens. <laughs> um, I have a thing for uh, vintage black pens from the late 50s to the early 70s. And I have a few examples here and I just pulled them out. And they're pens that for me, I really like. And I think they're really interesting designs. They're all similar in the fact that they are black with, you know, uh, mostly gold trim. I have one that has silver trim and one has a silver cap, of course, but um, they all really appeal to me. But I'm also going to, at the end of this, after I run through all these, I'm going to show you what I think is probably the, the greatest design from that period. Uh, it's not in the pot. It's not here at the moment. I'll show you at the end. And so these are roughly all the same era. And the pen I'll show you at the end is the sexiest of them all. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, it's a little funny. But anyway, um, they all have certain similarities uh, in design and they're all by no means uh, expensive pens. They're no means, by no means, you know, top brands. Uh, a you know, there's a couple there that are quite nice, but um, I'm going to start off just showing you what I think are some of my favorite pens from my personal collection. You're going to have a different opinion on different pens because you, you know, not everybody has these pens, of course, but um, so I'm going to start off the top and this is a relatively recent pen into my collection and it's one that I'm very, very fond of. I was looking for this uh, for quite a while or from this brand and, and uh, when I saw a black, uh, Conway Stewart 106. I just had to get it and I, I bid on it on eBay and I was the only one bidding on it and I got it and it's a beautiful little pen. I'm just going to move this out of the way. So yes, it's a beautiful little pen. I love it. Um, it's a pull cap, um, gold nib, uh, heavily gold plated uh, trim. It writes like a dream. Uh, didn't have to do anything really to it at all. Cleaning it, clean it up, uh, and it uh, it just works like a charm. So it's uh, the Conway Stewart. Yeah, it's a small pen. Vintage pens they tend to run smaller than say modern pens, and nowadays you see pens a little thicker and heavier and uh, girthier and maybe a little bit gaudier in some cases too. But, um, you know, I love the understated design elements of that period. Um, anyway, yes, very happy with that pen. Uh, the next one I'm going to show you is one I also did a video on uh, recently, and it's, it's relatively new to my collection too. And it's a Reform 4.3 eight eight and called the triangle pen because the cap is triangular and the piston knob at the end is triangular it's a piston filler it's a you know it's a feels like a plastic pen you could say it's a resin pen but it's a to me it's a very nice design it has um this little nib like sometimes vintage pens from that period when somebody will be kind of surprised when they see the nibs they're quite small compared to modern nibs right and this is sort of reminiscent um of some more expensive brands of that period now and it has what i would refer to almost as a fingernail style inset nib uh, semi-hooded somebody might say but when you look at it it reminds you of a uh, you know a small fingernail and that you see on more expensive brands uh, of that period. So for all I know, this is like a student brand pen. Uh, don't know too much about the history. You can, you know, uh, there was a, another triangle pen uh, of the same line, but it has an open nib. So it's, and it's quite nice too, but I don't have an example of that. Uh, this is a classic Japanese pilot. Uh, it's uh, once again, it has that same similar nib as the uh, as the uh, reform. That's you know 
Um, actually, quite a few. <laughs> if I pull the two of them out and put them side by side, you'll see how, you know, um, oh, that's the Conway Stewart. If you see how, you'll see how um, design elements are being copied across European or Asian brands. Uh, the Reform was a West German uh, brand and Pilot, of course, is Japanese. And it has a super quality nib and uh, it's not inked up at the moment, but it's a really lovely writer, um, a pen that I'm very fond of. Uh, once again, similar material. This feels like a light plastic. It's by no means a big pen. It's I usually post it when I have it inked and I'm writing with it. And it turns into a fairly long pen, but it's comfortable in the hand. But once again, another example of a vintage pen that by today's standards would be considered a small pen and rather thin pen. Uh, but I like that design and it, you know, I love the length of this section right here. It's very comfortable. Um, uh, and it, I, it has a graceful line and that's not the right cap. <laughs> uh, it also has, when I look at the nib, uh, the clip on it, it, it reminds me of a Pelican clip in some ways from that period. I don't have an example of a pelican from that period, but there are similarities in that design. So you see brands across different countries, you know, uh, copying each other in some ways. The next pen is another reform. Uh, just recently got this pen, and it's an interesting pen. It's sort of um. I can't find like I, this reform seems to go by a numbering system. So I have the Reform 4388, and I have the Reform Student Pen uh, 1745, and I've seen other numbering systems to different brands, but for whatever reason, I can't actually find the number to this pen yet, but, and I'm looking, so I'll have to do a, I'll take, I'll have to do an image search somehow on Google to find it. It's a screw cap, and really, when I look at it, it's almost out of proportion in some ways. It's long. It's very long pen in, in some ways, it, or it seems very long, even though it's not as um, it's as long as the other ones in many cases. But it, when I'm looking at it proportionately, it just seems long, uh, and that's probably because of the the shape and size of the the, the gold plated clip on it. It has this rather large metal teardrop ball on the end, and there's no cat. There's no band on the cap. You know, there's a decorative band on the end, and, you know, the, of course, there's the band on the clip, but then there's this long area of black, and it just makes the pen seem larger than it is. Um, but for some reason, even though the, the clip, when I'm looking at it, seems out of proportion, it, it, it to me, it's quite beautiful. There's something about that line, that shape, that just sets off this pen. And makes it seem very elegant and it's a screw cap um, it's an open nib and reform uh, is a company i'm quite interested in it's a two-tone it's gold and silver lots of scroll work reform made in germany um, it writes very well i was expecting it to uh, I put a modern converter in it, so when I came, it just had an empty cartridge, but uh, I found a converter that fits. So that's always nice when you buy, find a vintage pen that takes a modern converter. Um, and it, when you put the cap on, it's not back weighted. It's, uh, you know, it's, it feels very nice in the hand and it's, uh, yeah, so it's the reform. I'm going to call it reform, but I have no idea what number. And yeah, so West Germany, and I've put a sailor ink in it, and you know, uh, maybe the reason I like black pens so much is I can put any color ink in them. Uh, quite often, I will, um, you know, when I buy a, a pen, a modern pen, I try to match the inks to suit the color of the pen, you know. But uh, the great thing about a black pen is you can put any ink in it, so uh, <laughs> so it's kind of. Uh, maybe that's one of the reasons. Maybe that's one of the reasons I really like black pens. The next pen I have is actually 
in, in some ways a treasure uh, to me. Um, it has a bit of wear on the cap, there's a few scratches on the body, a uh, little bit of, you know, wear and tear on it. And, but, and it, what it is, is an Aurora 88P. And Aurora was an, is, was an Italian company. And this pen was designed uh, to copy the Parker 51. And you'll go through Europe at that time, or even, you know, all around the world, everybody was copying the Parker 51 or coming up with designs with semi-hooded nibs and, you know, that, uh, competing against that design. Because when the Parker 51 came in, it completely changed how pens were, 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 uh, were designed. And, uh, well, actually, is this the Aurora 88K, I think it is. Sorry, I'll have to check that number. So it's, yeah, so it's... Um, a beautiful writer. Um, and ah, my handwriting's terrible today. Now, when I bought it, I was expecting to have to do... <laughs> I was expecting to get a junk pen, really, when I bought this. Because uh, usually, sometimes you go to a site and you're looking around and you're trying to find a pen. And, uh, you know, they're just editing my... Ed sometimes when I'm looking for a pen, I'll find something that's quite nice, but it's just just beyond my my price range and normally an aurora 88 from this period would be far beyond what i would find but once again i found a probably a new seller i don't know maybe it was a new seller he had a the seller had several pens on their uh, on the website on their ebay page and they had this and i looked at it and i thought wow that's low so i threw a bit on it and i was the only person to bid on it and i won it and you know i was thinking when i got pen i'd be just taking it apart to look at it and figure out how it worked it's a piston filler and i figured it would be broken but i quickly realized as i was looking at it that it was very clean there was no sign of ink in the uh, there's an ink window there you can't really see it at the moment but it was clean it looked like the last person to use it had really cleaned it out and so i put water in it and it held water and then the, so the piston works and the see it doesn't leak and all the seals are good and for now it's working beautifully um interesting thing about the pen you really can't tell here but um this grip section is ebonite the body is celluloid and the piston knob is also ebonite um when you turn the knob, um, usually when you turn a knob on a, on a piston filler, the knob moves back. But on the Aurora 88, it almost has a reverse gear. So it doesn't move, but you turn it one way, the piston goes down. Turn it the other way, the piston goes up. But the knob doesn't move backwards away from the body. Um, so it almost has a, re it's like a reverse gear, essentially, within the pen. Really interesting little piece of technology. Um, and it's a little thicker than the other ones, uh, and, and it's a it, it way it's a heavier pen too. So because there's a lot of um, uh, me mechanisms inside, like with the piston and and things like that, and and because it's a piston filler, the body you know holds a lot of ink, so it, you know it feels like a heavier modern pen in some ways. But yeah, so uh, but it's a beautiful writer. There's a patina to it, you know, from, from its age. It's not a young pen. It's been through uh, somebody's pockets and somebody's used it over and over and it's been loved. And I'm very happy to have it in my collection. And, um, you know, uh, it's one that I'll always have. So now from that period, there's one pen to me that really has tested you know a lot of pens from this period have gone out of most of these pens are no well, all these pens are that i have here are no longer in production but they're classics of design in my opinion but they're no longer made and you look at you know even the the, the models that pelican was making at that time they've been dis discontinued but there's one pen from this period that's still being made today and it's one of my favorite pens and um it's this, the Lamy 2000. This pen was designed back probably in the early 60s or so. 
Uh, it's inspired by German design. It's, you know, it has that Bajas uh, functional design to it. It's a piston filler. And of all the pens from that period, it's one of the few that is still made today without very, you know, if there's any design changes, they're, they're very few. This is a modern example, of course. This isn't from the 60s. This is, you know, I bought this a few years ago. I got this a couple of years, few years ago. And, um, you know, but they still make them today. And it's one of the most popular pens in the fountain pen world, you know. Um, it, it uh, once again, you see that semi hooded nib, you know, it's a uh, made of um, material called macrolon, which is like a fiberglass. So when you're holding it in your hand, it has this beautiful sort of warm, natural feel to it. It doesn't feel at all like plastic. It just has this beautiful feel to it. And it's, uh, in my opinion, one of the sexiest pens ever made from that period uh, i i know well the sexiest pen from that period that i have <laughs> i'll say that you know i don't want to start an argument but um but it's always interested me in some ways that you know you see mont blanc and pelican and you know other you know pilot pens from that period that just were discontinued and changed and uh but lamy was ahead of its time and it's a timeless design and it's being, still being made today and what a great pen it is and if you have a chance it's a, it's a gold nib um compared to other gold nibs it's actually very reasonable priced uh you know it's not an inexpensive pen at all really uh when you think about it, <laughs> about it but it's a great entry into gold nibs if you're into fountain pens and you want to get um you know, your first gold nib, you can't go wrong with a Lamy 2000. Um, it's a pen that if you're working in an office or, you know, a profession, a doctor, a lawyer, it's going to be perfectly suitable. It's great for if you're an artist and you want something stylish and classic design. It's a perfect pen. Students, it's a reliable writer. It carries a ton of ink. Um, if you're somebody who dresses flamboyantly and it's like, it's a, <laughs> you know, doesn't matter who you are, this pen suits you. So, um, anyway, that's uh, my collection or some of my collection of what I would call sexy black pens. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it was kind of fun thinking about it. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you very much.